The Battle of Ankum was a battle fought between two factions of the royal family, in the Ethiopian Empire. The battle was fought to determine who would rule the empire, Empress Udichu or King Tafari Makonan. The Battle of Ankum is memorable because the pro-Zudichu forces were not openly supported by Empress Zudichu. The battle is also memorable for the use of both psychological warfare and aerial warfare by the pro-Tafari forces. Chapter 1 – Background On 27 October 1928, 32 years old Ras Tafari Makonan, the future Emperor Haile Selassie I, was crowned king. He was crowned by Empress Zudichu. Since 1916, during Tafari's minority, Zudichu had been regent. As regent, she exercised the real power in Ethiopia. The crowning of Tafari as king caused him to begin exercising power at the expense of Zudichu. His crowning also caused two factions to develop within the royal court, one faction was pro-Tafari and one faction was pro-Zudichu. The husband of Zudichu, 53-year-old Ras Gugzawela, imagined a future where Zudichu remained empress and he himself would be proclaimed emperor. He was clearly the leader of the pro-Zudichu faction. Within a month of Tefari being crowned king, the Rea Oromo revolted in Wallo province. As king and with the tacit approval of the empress, Negus Tafari called for the governors of several neighboring provinces to suppress the Oromo revolt. Ras Sayam Mangasha from Aksum in western Tigra, Ras Gutsa Rea Selassie from Makal in eastern Tigra, Dijasmuk Ayalu Buru from Semyon, and Ras Gugsa Wella from Begemda were called upon. Gugsa Wella and others were unhappy with the rise of Negus Tafari. As a result, the response to Tafari's call was less than enthusiastic, efforts to suppress the Oromo were dissipated in palace intrigue, and the revolt continued. A trusted cousin of Tafari, Ras Imru Haile Selassie, was made Shum of Wallo in an effort to end the revolt. In addition to not being happy with the rise of Tafari, Gugsa Wella tried to rally traditional Ethiopia to his side in support of his wife, the Empress. In the opinion of this faction, Tafari was too young, too modern, and it was rumored that he had even secretly converted to Roman Catholicism. Gugsa Wella wrote letters to the leaders of Tigra and Goyam seeking support for his revolt. He wrote to Ras Sayam Mangasha and Ras Gugsa Rea Selassie of Tigra and to Ras Hailu Tekel Hamanot of Goyam. All three initially appeared supportive. But, after reconsideration, none responded to the letters from Gugsa Wella and all three provincial leaders failed to join him. On the other hand, the rebelling Oromo did agree to join forces. Chapter 2 – Battle Negus Tafari Makonan called a chitet, the traditional mustering of the provincial levies. Ostensibly he was raising an army to finally crush the ongoing revolt in Wallow. At the time, Ras Gugsawela was not in open revolt, and Empress Zudichu was still pleading with him not to go into open revolt. In the end, as part of the government, the Empress was in the strange position of being formally on the same side as King Tafari and being against her husband who was rebelling on her behalf. The response to the Chitet, like the initial call to suppress the revolt in Wallow, was less than enthusiastic initially. The newly appointed Minister of War, Ras Mulugeta Yegazu, was only able to raise the Mahel Sefari with 16,000 men pledged to it. Worse, by January 1930, Mulugeta Yegazu found himself with only 2,000 men as he gathered in Desi. Worse yet, Gugsa Wella was now in open revolt, and he had already gathered an army in Debre Tabor of 35,000 utterly devoted men. He was able to do this even without the forces from Tigra and Goyam. On 24 February, Empress Zudichu and King Tafari issued the imperial proclamation of Yakartit. The proclamation declared that Ras Gugsa Wella was a rebel. Attached to the proclamation was an anathema signed by the Coptic Abuna Kiilos and by five new bishops, Sauiros, Abraham, Petros, Mikhail, and Isaac. The anathema was addressed to all monasteries of Begemda. It concluded and therefore, you may follow Ras Gugsa Wella, you may attach yourself to him, be cursed and excommunicated, 
your life and your flesh are outcasts from Christian society. The devotion of many of the men following Ras Gugsawela was shaken by the proclamation and its attached anathema. In mid March, Ras Mulugeta marched the Mahel Sefari from Desi to Debre Tabor to face the rebellious Gugsawela. With him were five cannon, seven machine guns, and something entirely new for Ethiopian warfare aircraft. Chapter 2 Section 1 Psychological Warfare On 28 March 1930, when Gugsawela's army crossed the border of Bigemda province moving towards Shua province, it was met with an unusual sight. Three Ethiopian government biplanes flew overhead. In 1922, Rastafari Makonan had first shown interest in military aircraft and, by 1929, a small Ethiopian air arm was under development and was now used for the first time. The biplanes dropped numerous copies of two specially created leaflets onto the advancing army. One leaflet bore a message from the newly arrived Abuna Kialos. The message from Kialos was that anyone who fought against the government forces would be excommunicated. A second leaflet was from King Tafari and Empress Zudichu and it declared Guxawela to be a rebel. In an example of psychological warfare, the leaflets appealed to the known conservative and religious sympathies of the forces fighting for Guxawela. Some of his army started to desert him. Chapter 2 Section 2 Biplanes and the Plains of Ankum On 31 March, both armies met at Debre Zebit on the plains of Ankum. At 9 a.m., the biplanes once again appeared. But this time bombs and not leaflets were dropped upon Guxawela's army. At this point in Ethiopian history, aerial warfare was still quite novel, unprecedented, and totally unexpected. More of his army deserted Guxawela. The Imperial Army raid against Guxawela included Fitterari Wandosan Kassa in the center, Kegnasmuk Iolo Buru on the right, and Fitterari Fikri Mariam on the left. Fitterari Wandosan Kassa was the eldest son of Ras Kassa Haile Darge, Kegnasmuk Iolo Buru commanded the troops from Semyon, and Fitterari Fikri Mariam commanded the troops from Wallo. In reserve were forces under Ras Mulugeta Yegazu and Jasma Kadafrasoyanado. According to Time magazine, by the time of battle, the two opposing armies were a mismatch. Gugsa Wella and his army of Bigemda numbered approximately 10,000 men, and were armed with ten machine guns and two cannons. Opposing them was a much better equipped army of approximately 20,000 men loyal to the central government. Battle began and, after four hours, the imperial forces under Fitterari Wandosan Kassa, and Kignasmuk Iolu Buru gained the upper hand. With the tide turning, Ras Gugsa Wella's shaken army started to desert him in large numbers. Chapter 2 Section 3 Coup de Grasse Shortly after midday, Ras Gugsawela was surrounded and isolated. It was at this time that the coup de grace was delivered. Gugsawela was called upon to surrender. Mounted on a white charger, he chose to fight on, was shot several times, and was killed. Fitterari Shamai, the second in command of the army of Bigemda, fought on until he was captured later in the afternoon. What little was left of the army then completely disintegrated. Gugsa Wella's Oromo allies never showed up during the battle. Instead, they arrived a day later. De Jasmuk Baru Valda Gabriel, and the army of Sidamo province entered Deborah Tabor unopposed. With the death of Gugsa Wella and the destruction of his army, the rebellion was ended. Chapter 3 Aftermath Gondar the capital of Bigemda province, was taken without resistance soon after the Battle of Ankam ended. Fitterari Wandosan Kassa benefited because his father, a loyal ally of Negus Tafari, was given all of the lands formerly controlled by Gugsa Wella. As a result, Wandosan Kassa was made the Shum of Bigemda province. Within three days of the death of Gugsa Wella, Empress Zudichu was dead of natural causes. On 2 November 1930, about eight months after the passing of Zudichu, Negus Tafari Makonan was proclaimed Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia. Chapter 4, Footnotes and Citations 
Footnotes Citations, 